This is a 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokee 4xe. And this is essentially right here, the future of Jeep. We all pretty much know that everything's going electric. And if it's not fully electric, it's going to at least be hybrid. And this, along with the Wrangler 4xe, which we already reviewed, is a glimpse into what that is going to look like. So today, we're going to take you a walk around this Jeep right here. And we're going to talk about some of the cool tech it has. We're actually going to talk about some of the problems that it has. And I'll just overall discuss uh, what it's going to look like for the future of Jeep. My name is Brett Kennedy, and you're watching the Chooches. Just a quick history on the Grand Cherokee. So the Grand Cherokee originally came out in 1993. They've made five generations since then. This is a WL Grand Cherokee, which came out in 2021. Now, this is actually the first year of the 4xe. 2023 was the first year they came out with that. For the Grand Cherokee, the Wrangler 4xe came out in 2021. Um, but I borrowed this one today from my mother. This is her daily driver. She's had it for about a year now. And uh, believe it or not, she actually has some mixed feelings about it. So I'm going to talk about some of the things that she doesn't like about it as well. I think that's important. She's obviously lived with this for over 20,000 miles now. Um, and in all honesty, too, I always like to go over the mods. There is nothing on this car that she has changed. She has not done a single thing to this. So let's get into it. So first things first, let's talk powertrain. Very important when you're talking about a hybrid vehicle because there is so many different things with them. So uh, for starters, this is a two liter turbocharged inline four. This is the only engine that you can get. Uh, and it's linked to a 14 kilowatt battery and one electric motor. Uh, for a combined output, it's got 375 horsepower and 470 foot-pounds of torque at its maximum if you have the engine and the hybrid system fully working at the same time. Additionally, this is all paired to an 8-speed automatic transmission, and every 4xe model is four-wheel drive. Um, this one cool thing with these hybrid systems, obviously, you know, they're a little temperamental sometimes, um, but they do have an eight-year, 100,000-mile hybrid warranty right now, which is kind of cool. And then additionally... Um, you know, they have the regular five-year, 60,000-mile powertrain warranty on the engine that will come with every model. Uh, one cool thing that Jeep actually does with these, so, you know, Jeep likes to talk about their off-roading abilities, and they actually made the battery pack waterproof. So you can do up to 24 inches of water fording in this, and the battery is going to be completely fine. Um, I think that is pretty neat as well. However, I don't think this is the best engine for this. Um, you can get this in the regular Wrangler, too, and this is what comes in the 4xe. And I think it has to work a little hard for something like this. I mean, this is a big car, and you don't have a huge electric range on this. It's about 25, 26 miles at 100% charge. Um, so you do use the engine a lot in this. This isn't one that you're going to be running around in electric mode all the time. And I do think it's a little underpowered for what it is. I think it's kind of noisy. Um, and I just wish they had another powertrain option for this. So we'll see how that goes in the future. Hopefully, ideally, too, uh, the battery range will get way better as these go on. Um, but that is one thing I'm not a huge fan of with this powertrain. Let's talk about the design a little bit. So one thing I think is kind of neat with these is, in my eyes, these look like a baby Wagoneer or Grand Wagoneer. Uh, they came out with that right around the same time as they came out this generation, Grand Cherokee. And I like it. I think it looks a little more high-end than the older ones do. I actually really like the look of the older body-style Grand Cherokees as well. Um, but it's pretty aggressive looking. And they do also make the L model of these now, which is the three-row, but you cannot get that with the 4xe at this time. So if we look over here, there's a couple differences on the 4xe. So for one, you get all these blue accents. Uh, so like right here around the Jeep, you can kind of see on the edges, it's all blue. Uh, unfortunately, you can't change that. This is a velvet red example, and you can't get a different color accent or whatever, which kind of sucks. Um, but then you have the charge port door right here, so you can plug it in. It is a full plug-in hybrid if you have it at home, uh, but you can also set it to have the engine charge up the hybrid system as well. Once again, you have all the blue on the Grand Cherokee emblem right there. Kind of a cool touch with the American flag. Um, but that's pretty much it. They got the 4xe logo on the back as well. Once again, a little bit more blue. But there's not a ton of differences to actually show you what's different with this um, over just the regular Grand Cherokee. This is pretty much the base Grand Cherokee model, but it does have one cool option, and that's like the Luxury Tech 2 package. So one of the cool things you get with that, you do get an integrated off-road camera on here. Um, this also kind of works with the parking system. It has the surround view parking system, uh, but kind of a cool touch. It's usually a thing that you see on like the Wranglers, the Gladiators. I like that they added that in here. If we stand up and come over this way, uh, a couple other things with the features. Um, you do have the auto wipers with the Luxury Pro Tech 2 group, and you just get, you know, uh, the front and rear parking sensors, and probably the coolest thing that I'll show on the inside. So you have your regular backup camera back here, um, you know, when it comes on the screen. We also have a camera up here, and this is for the mirror. And I think this is awesome. Um, but it is kind of funny, too, and we'll get to that when we get in there. Lastly, before we take it out for a spin, I want to touch on some of the issues that this thing has had. So, as I mentioned earlier, uh, this is my mom's car. She's drove it about 20,000 miles since she's had it over the last year. I mean, she's had a couple issues with it. So, it had a few recalls, and there's just been a lot of weird, I guess you could say electrical gremlins with it. Um, so, she's had issues where the heat won't turn on when she first starts up the vehicle. Um, I drove it once. I had an issue where I had the adaptive cruise control on. 
uh, was coming up towards another car and then he got really close and aggressively hit the brakes. It's not supposed to do that. It's supposed to obviously slow down with ample time. I mean, there's just been a lot of weird things like that. She had a tailgate issue where the tailgate wouldn't open. She had to manually pop it, but then it's been fine ever since. And it's been nothing, like, don't get me wrong, it's nothing that makes her not able to drive the car. Um, but it's just really odd. And they've had a hard time tracking some of these issues in the service center just because it's they're, they're intermittent. There's no way of knowing when it's going to happen, and it's kind of random when it does. Um, but I do think Jeep needs to kind of get that together. I mean, once again, this is a first model year vehicle. That is kind of expected to happen with something like this. But it's just something to note if you're looking at possibly buying one of these. Climbing into the cabin of the Grand Cherokee 4 E. So one cool thing with these, um, they're meant to be, you know, a little more upscale. They don't make the 4 E in some base model cloth seats, low spec trim. Um, they actually have a lot of standard equipment. So we got the full panoramic sunroof. We have adaptive cruise control, heated seats, heated steering wheel, and leather seating surfaces. Now, this one does get a couple extras once again because of that extra package. Uh, we got ventilated seats, you know, just a couple small things like that. You got some window shades in the back here, um, but nothing too fancy. And uh, it's still very nice for, you know, the, the base model. Uh, you can get some pretty crazy Summit, Summit Reserve, you know, get some insane amount of features. Um, and this one, the sticker is right around $62,000. So you get a fair amount of features for what it is, um, but it's nothing too over the top. Another cool thing with the 4xE Grand Cherokee is the infotainment system. So this is a little bit over a 10-inch screen here, and this is the Uconnect 5 screen. So Uconnect 5, that's what Stellantis calls all their infotainment systems. Um, and this is pretty much the newest one that they have out. They actually haven't even trickled this into all the models yet. Um, but one thing that's really cool about this is it's actually it's very responsive, as you can see. Um, it works really well. And I just like that they have all the you know, things that you would expect out of here. Um, one cool thing, you have the physical buttons for the heated seats and stuff, but you can also use it in the screen here. And it's just really nice. I mean, one of the biggest things with this is that you can get wireless CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. Uh, on the older systems, you actually had to physically plug in your phone, which is not a huge deal. Um, but just for the convenience of it, I think that was a huge thing. Another big improvement that they have on this over the outgoing model, you can actually have two phones Bluetooth at once. So you can choose which one is connected, and you know if you get a call, it'll come through. Um, but it's nice you can have them both connected and then you can just switch through depending on who you have in the seat. Another really cool feature on the 4xE that comes standard is the passenger display. So from right there where the driver's sitting, you probably can't even tell that there's a display there. But when you move it over, you'll realize it's on. This is an incredible design. You can't even, like, you can't even see it if you're driving, so there's no distraction from it. Uh, and it's a full touchscreen display, so you can do all sorts of different things. Uh, you can do the camera apps. I've noticed this isn't quite as responsive, it seems to me, as the main screen, um, but pretty cool. You can have the navigation up here, so if your passenger wants to tell you directions. Um, and I just, I think this is awesome. I mean, it's, it's a little gimmicky, sure. Um, you can even supposedly plug in things and watch movies on here, which seems a little nuts. I mean, I feel like it'd be a little easy on your phone. Um, but very cool feature, standard on all the 4xE models. So I mentioned before the extra camera on the mirror. So as you can see right now, this is just in a straight, normal mirror mode. But you take the lever right here and you flip it up, and it's a full camera out the back there. Now, one thing that's really odd about this is that it's very close. It seems like you're very close to wherever you're backing up to. It seems like we're basically hitting the house, uh, but we're really not. And that's something that it takes a minute to get used to, but I do think that this is one of the nicest safety features, especially if you got people sitting in the back. My favorite little detail on the 4xE Grand Cherokee is actually in the back window here. So if you take a look, nice power lift gate, you can see all the generations of Grand Cherokee imprinted right there on the back window, all the way from the first one in 93, to the one that we're driving today. Very subtle detail, I think that's insanely cool. And you have a little old school Willys Jeep climbing the window back here. So driving the 4xE Grand Cherokee. So we're starting off in hybrid mode, which is kind of your regular um, basic drive mode. So they have hybrid, e-save, and electric. Obviously electric's full electric. E-save, there's two different options. You can either have it charge the battery while you're driving and you know use the engine to charge it up as much as it can, or you can just have it maintain the current state of charge and not use any of it. Uh, so right now we're in hybrid. It'll just kind of switch between the two as it sees fit. Um, and also we're driving it and there's snow all over the road. So this isn't going to be a true, like, this is a great driving impressions of it. Um, but I've driven this before, so I kind of know what it feels like when it's not awful weather out. First thing I noticed when I drove this thing, uh, and any of the WL Grand Cherokees for that matter, is the brakes are crazy sensitive. I mean, you barely hit it and it's coming to a stop. Uh, I think that's kind of a nice thing once you get used to it, but there is a little bit of a learning curve for it. Um, in the other models, like for example, my Wrangler, when I got that new with nine miles on it, it was nowhere near as sensitive as this is, you know, 20,000 miles later still. Um, another thing with the 4xE is you get the regenerative braking. So you, there's a button here for max regen mode. Um, it'll kind of slow down itself a little bit when you take the max regen mode on. 
Um, however, it will not come to a complete stop like the Tesla or some of the other electric car models will. Uh, I do wish that they made it so that it would come to a complete stop because I think that's one of the coolest things about driving like a Tesla or something is that you don't have to use the brake pedal if you're driving pretty you know, respectfully. Um, but you know what? It's not bad and it's, you know, it is what it is. All right, so acceleration wise, we'll give it a little bit of a pull here. Mom, I'm not beating on your car. She's gonna yell at me. Hopefully she doesn't watch this video. So here's the thing. It's a little, there's a delay there. I mean, if they'll, if it's not ready to go, if it's just an electric, I mean, it, it takes a second. I don't really like that. Now, if you're in e-save mode, you have the engine response obviously a little bit better. Um, it's got an adequate amount of power. It's nothing crazy. I mean, it's really not that fast. You would expect it to probably be a little faster. I mean, I do think if down the road they do like the SRT version of this, I think that would be, I mean, they could probably make that pretty fun. Um, but I'm not a big fan of the power delivery. Now, if we switch to full electric here by hitting the thing, uh, you know, obviously it'll completely cut the engine out. And it's slow. I mean, it's, it's a dog if you're just in electric. I mean, it's only 100 something horsepower from the electric motor. I don't remember the exact number off the top of my head. I'll put it in the video here. Um, but you know, it, it, the point of this isn't performance. I mean, you gotta keep that in mind. I'm a performance guy. I like to drive the stuff fast. It's not really the point of this. I think it's very smooth on the highway. I think it ha has got, you know, handles nice for what it is. I mean, it's a grand Cherokee. It's not going to handle great or anything, but it, it drives nice and it's, it's good for road trips. I mean, obviously, you know, the nice thing with having the engine still is that you don't have to worry about charging all the time. You can just run it on the gas boat and it's fine. Um, but you know, kind of what I was saying earlier, I wish they had a few more powertrain options for it. And uh, I do think there's still a little bit of refinement to be made. That being said, still drives very nice. Um, you know, this by style Grand Cherokee, even the non 4 by es drive very nice. So I don't think you can necessarily go wrong with it. Um, but if you are looking for a 4 by e you know, I, I would just consider those things. I mean, I think down the road, you know, in a few years, there's a good chance they're going to come out with something that's significantly more refined than this. And I would be a little concerned value-wise. I mean, this is expensive, starts at $62,000. I'd be a little worried about the residual if something that's way better comes out. Why would you want the older model? Um, but like I said, nothing that I can knock it for driving wise. I mean, it is about exactly what you would expect. This has been my review of the 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokee 4xe. I think it's a good car. I think it's got a lot of potential and I think there are some cool glimpses in here to see what Jeep's going to do in the future. However, I do think it needs a little more refinement. I am excited to see as the years go on what this ends up turning into. So. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you do have any car that you would like to see me review, please email us in the email below. I'd be more than happy if you're in the Wisconsin area, um, just, you know, come out and take a look at your car. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Brakes were nowhere near as sensitive as it is on this. So there is, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, we're gonna restart. Thank you uh, to me for choosing this day to film. As you can see, we got snow plows going around. It's about 20 degrees out, and we have about a foot of snow on the ground. So I do a really good job timing these videos, hence why the vehicle is just so clean as well. <laughs> what is it for? <laughs> oh, I thought I was going to fall in more. <laughs> well, that was fun. <laughs> Turn around. <laughs> Wow.